Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. The Lord be with you. Welcome once again to our worship online this week. And it's good to have you with us. Please follow the prompts on the screen or if you've got the pew sheet at home, follow there and join in the responses that you find most appropriate. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Conscious of our failure to proclaim the gospel, let us call to mind our sin. You came to unite and restore your people. Lord, have mercy. Your call is for us to be part of your eternal family. Christ, have mercy. We sometimes fail to recognise your presence in our midst. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Come close to us, O God, and with your word of truth, purify the intentions of our hearts. Let us walk in your law of liberty as doers who act and are blessed in their doing, so that what we profess with our lips we may carry out in our lives for the sake of your praise and glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare to hear God's holy word through the scriptures, open our hearts and minds, Lord. Amen. The voice of my beloved. Look, he comes leaping upon the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle, or a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing in at the windows, looking through the lattice. My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away, for now the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom, they give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark, chapter 7, beginning at the first verse. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around him, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands. He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honours me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrine. 
you abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. When he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about the parable. He said to them, Then do you also fail to understand? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile, since it enters not the heart but the stomach and goes out into the sewer? Thus he declared all foods clean. And he said, It is what comes out of a person that defiles. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within and they defile a person. For the gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There is a delicate balance between traditions for tradition's sake and the need for good governance. At Trinity College, there was an old saying, perpetuated mainly by the warden, the late Father Evan Burge, that went something along the lines of, do it once, it is a precedence. Do it twice, it's tradition. Many of the things we do are based on the foundations of the past. That is not a bad thing. But what if the tradition becomes more important than the reason why something is done? How easy it is it for us to keep the balance? And how do we keep our balance? That I can tell you in one word. Tradition! of our traditions. We've kept our balance for many, many years. Here in Anatevka, we have traditions for everything. How to sleep, how to eat, how to work, how to wear clothes. For instance, we always keep our heads covered and always wear a little prayer shawl. This shows our constant devotion to God. You may ask, how did this tradition get started? I'll tell you. I don't know. Some traditions have to change because of our lockdown and COVID, how it has challenged us. Getting this balance right isn't easy. At the heart of today's gospel is Jesus' teaching on the nature of traditions. What he has to say is not particularly pleasant in terms of the reprimand that he makes. Drawing on the words of the prophet Isaiah, Jesus reiterates what has been a lengthy criticism by the prophets and rabbis throughout the centuries. This people honours me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrine. And he then summarises this for the Pharisees. You abandon the commandment of God and hold on to human tradition. The giving of the law and the statutes in Leviticus 
became a legal code or constitution. It was honoured not so much in the keeping of the law, but selective reading and application. The traditions that were comfortable or convenient often outweighed the common sense and relevant. There we go, right on cue. The laws regarding food made sense for a nomadic community. If food had to come from some distance, then not eating them made more sense. It's not for any reason alone that we call basic food poisoning salmonella. And of course we know that if less chicken and pork are cooked properly, there was another high risk to the community. As Jesus explained and taught his disciples, there's an editorial note in Mark's Gospel that points to this very tradition. Thus he called all foods clean. The origins of that are now lost in time and practice. The new balance was that common sense was more important than keeping a tradition for ritual's sake. Now there is a genuine concern for the Pharisees in today's Gospel. The disciples would eat with defiled hands. That is to say, they didn't wash and scrub them for more than 20 seconds, presumably singing the Aramaic tradition of happy birthday to you. Today we would look at it saying, haven't you heard of COVID? She has. My hands are in considerable pain at the moment due to the excessive use of sanitizer. The alcohol has aggravated the damage that was done when I was undergoing some skin cancer treatment a few years back. Yet, not out of tradition, but knowing that this is very important, I do keep my hands clean to stop the spread of the virus. No pain, no gain. No gain, no brain. One of the things that the Levitican Code indeed highlighted was the need for cleanliness. Whilst it was codified in the teachings, the traditions were founded on common sense. There was an obvious link between unclean and disease. Washing your hands before meals makes good sense. I can still hear my mother shouting at us, tea time, go wash your hands and then sit at the table. It wasn't so much a tradition, but a directive that required instant obedience. If we didn't comply, some sort of instant punishment was about to be unleashed. And if that wasn't effective, there was always the absolutely awful threat of just wait till your father gets home. Dad, we're still waiting. The section omitted from the readings today is an example of where Jesus points to the way out when the laws were inconvenient. Finding a loophole is nothing new. He owes about $650 million to Wall Street and foreign banks. Or maybe he doesn't want the American people, all of you watching tonight, to know that he's paid nothing in federal taxes because the only years that anybody's ever seen were a couple of years when he had to turn them over to state authorities when he was trying to get a casino license and they showed he didn't pay any federal income tax. So that makes if me he's smart. paid zero... That means the example given in the Gospel today is something dear to my heart and service. Care for the vulnerable community members by the family and beyond. A family could be freed from responsibility of looking after their elderly and vulnerable. There was a way out. It was a tradition to offer the same amount that it would cost as a gift, korban, to the temple if you had the means. In theory, the temple was meant to use the funds charitably, but the reality was often different. By allowing a gift instead of the care negated the Levitan Code. Effectively, it broke the fifth commandment and all the other rules of the Levitan Code relating to the family. You shall honour your mother and your father. The tradition says that in renouncing responsibility for elders, effectively you've cursed your parents to death. And so, <clears throat> a simple question regarding not so much hygiene, but rather tradition. 
brings a stinging rebuke to the Pharisees. Further to this, when explaining the harshness of the word, Jesus points out that it's not so much what we put into ourselves that defiles us. It's it, what defiles us is our action. If our traditions cause us to separate ourselves from the love that the Lord requires, then we are in a state of sin. I think back to the anointing of David as king of Judah and Israel. The Lord sees unlike mortals. The Lord looks upon the heart and not on vanity. The archangel Gabriel said to Mary, you have found favour with God. God looks at the purity of the heart, but our actions can and often do betray. If our intent is evil or trying to find a loophole around something in the name of tradition, we're not obeying the word of God. So, how do we balance all this? Oh, we heard Topo say in Fiddler on the Roof, Tradition. Our traditions may well keep us balanced, but it's important that sometimes that the ritual reason why is brought to mind first and not the other way around. Just a little side note on tradition. I was saddened to learn that a much beloved cat, which was resident at Sophia Hagi Mosque in Istanbul, died at the age of 16 years. Glee was much loved. There's a tradition of cats at the mosques that go back centuries. Centuries ago, a new kitten at a mosque belonging to the local Iman was fascinated by the prayers and the line of shoes that would be outside. One of my previous cats, Sophia, nice little segue there, she certainly loved shoes, and when I had friends over from Tasmania who went on a shoe-buying spree, Sophie completely rearranged the shoes. I came home and found them everywhere. They also like to attack the people as they're bowing over in prayer. So the community insisted that the cat must be tied up by the door. Centuries on, that particular mosque still has cats tied up at the door at the time of prayer. You see, a lot of people have forgotten why, but however, it's now become tradition. So, when it comes to why do you do that, ask away. Sometime in the next month, I'm going to host a couple of online nights as we looked at some of the things we do and asked the question, why? And a tradition. Maybe the ritual reason why may illuminate your heart and soul, that you might actually find some freedom. And in that freedom, may you glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ.
The response to Lord, you know the innermost thoughts of our hearts. Is hear our prayers. If you like, close your eyes and let this time, which follows be part of our prayers for the world and the church. You may like to pause the video here and get your own candle. Focus on the light. Jesus is the true light that has come into the world. We sit with him now in our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord, who knows all the secrets of our hearts. Give grace to the church to be steadfast in faith, firm in your word, zealous in good work. Keep your people strong when their discipleship is costly and the burden is heavy. Lord, you know the innermost thoughts of our hearts, hear our prayers. Have mercy on your human creation that does not recognize its true identity. Restore the world to knowledge of the truth and lead it out of the slavery of error into the perfect law of liberty. Lord, you know the innermost thoughts of our hearts, hear our prayers. Fill us with praise for the good gifts that you have given to us in families and friendships. Give us grace to use them in your service for the good of others. Lord, you know the innermost thoughts of our hearts, hear our prayers. Visit and relieve all who suffer from cruelty and injustice under evil laws. We continue to uphold in prayer all areas of conflict in the world. We particularly, Lord, continue our prayers for Myanmar, Afghanistan, and other areas of concern across the world. Through the sufferings of Christ, grant them release and turn the hearts of their persecutors. Lord, you know the innermost thoughts of our hearts, hear our prayers. We pray for all those for whom our prayers have been asked. We particularly pray today for John and Diana, Rosemary and John, Brett Safry, Margaret Lake, Alan Young, Malcolm Colcown, and others whom we name in our hearts. Be with all who exercise healing ministry and those involved in research. Lord, you know the innermost thoughts of our hearts, hear our prayers. We give thanks for the peace of the departed, whose suffering is over and who rest in your care. We give thanks for those whose years mind occurs around this time. Malcolm Strahd, Andrew Covington, priest, Vivienne Watts, and Reg Bunting. Grant them a place in the glory of heaven. Lord, you know the innermost thoughts of our hearts, hear our prayers. We pray together. Eternal God, source of all peace, you call your children to live together as one family. Give us grace to learn your ways and to do your will that we may bring your justice and peace to all people. By the power of Jesus Christ, our Lord for ever and ever. Amen. Being made one by the power of the Spirit, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Okay, I'm going to do the closing sequence of prayers while we're here. And uh, you can see I've been joined by the occasion by the obligatory cat. This one is Terpsichore, or Terps. And uh, she's a good girl, named after the muse of dancing and movement. And the sister is Polymnia, named after means many, so, uh, the muse of many voices or song. Also the mother of the sirens. And if you hear them screaming in the middle of the night, you'll understand that that's quite appropriate. 
Now, um, let's have a look at the notices for today. They were sent out during the week, and we thank Lindsay for that. All being well, we will uh, be back together next week at um, Church of the Resurrection, and we will hopefully uh, be able to conclude the wedding um, blessing that we started out with. Now, in terms of where we are in, uh, at the moment, we do need to just wait and see what the state's going to do. I know for many of us in this, at the moment, this is really a particularly difficult lockdown uh, following a very sharp one earlier. We've got to do the right thing and try and minimise this. If you have not already had your vaccine, please make an appointment to get that done as soon as possible. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father, is this, to care for the orphans and the widows in their distress and to keep oneself sustained by the world. May the Creator God who formed us in our mother's womb be known to us and those whom we meet. May the Son give us through his presence a heart to long for and discern his divine presence. And may the Holy Spirit give us courage to proclaim the divine providence that has hovered over us since the foundation of the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Don't forget, virtual morning tea, Sunday at 10.30am. There is a direct link from the email which was sent out Thursday as well as on the parish website. Be in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Are you going to say goodbye? Say goodbye? No? Okay, fair enough. I'll say goodbye for everyone. Bye.